Hey everyone, I hope you're well. Today we're going to be doing a tips video that's going to take some of your skills in Apex from noob level to more, more closer to the pro level. And by the end, I would have thrown out about 30 tips for you that you can really implement into your own gameplay. And yeah, let's just get into it. So starting off, we're going to be talking about movement, one of the most important things in Apex Legends. Later, we'll be talking about positioning. It's not really gonna to be too much about aiming because aiming is something that you just grow yourself. And I also released a aiming video very recently. There's a card right now on screen, but Movement's the most important thing and the thing that you can constantly refine. It's not really going to be something that you have to build muscle memory for. It's something that you have to actively learn and push yourself to get better at. Once you've learned certain skills, it's like riding a bike. You will be able to do it every time. Like aiming, which is like this constant thing you have to keep like refreshing your ability. You gotta keep your aim fresh, right? So either way, we're gonna jump into that. So first up, we're gonna be looking at strafing, how to make the perfect strafe, right? Starting from just basic strafing all the way to advanced strafing with crouches, variable movement speeds, and specific legend-based strafe patterns. First though, I want to thank today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Intel. They've teamed up with ASUS to build the ASUS ROG Zephyrus Duo 15, powered by the Intel 10th Gen Intel Core i7 or i9 processor. I was super excited when Intel reached out to me because this actually finally makes streaming and content creation straight from a laptop a real possibility instead of just kind of like a nightmare. Intel and ASUS have been very creative by building a second companion display into the laptop. This second display is crucial for me to be able to see my stream performance and chat whilst live streaming and if you're looking to break out into content creation yourself or you don't have much space or you're constantly moving location for work or family then I'm sure you could see the benefit of a gaming laptop like this. I know the world is going through a tough time right now but once we're back on track I just want to travel the world with my wife and having this laptop is actually going to give me the opportunity to work whilst I go. I tested Apex Legends myself and you can get a decent frame rate in 4k high settings or go to 1080p and you'll be hitting over 120 FPS. This screen is a 144 hertz display and the companion display is touch screen as well and if you're not really interested in content creation you can still put it to good use. You can put things down here like Spotify or your own music or you can use a bunch of apps that Overwolf have designed specifically for this laptop. For example Predator for Apex will be able to utilize the second companion display to showcase your damage in the game, your health, your weapon and ammo count and just overall information about how you're performing in game which is super useful at a glance. So if you're in the market to upgrade and you want something a little different this time to offer more portability and more flexibility then the ASUS ROG Zephyrus Duo 15 may be something to get this holiday season. So the number one tip is you should strafe in this game as much as possible. If you're standing still, you are gonna die. You have to move, do not stand still. If you're in a fight or an engagement, especially if you're out in the open, we'll talk more about that later, right? Number one, strafe. Second thing, throw in some crouches, pretty simple strafing and crouching will do two things. Firstly, it changes your player height, which is going to be harder for the enemy to track. And secondly, when you crouch, you actually change your movement speed for a short time. And by doing that, your strafes are going to be more random. You'll have variable movement thrown into it, which is going to make things harder for them to track. It's a really easy way to mix up your strafe movement speed without getting into the technicalities of doing other things, which we will be getting into in a minute. Next, let's talk about strafe patterns for each legend. Every legend has a different strafe pattern that works the best. For example, with Wraith being so small, but has st still needing to do the same amount of movement from point A to point B, it makes it look like her player model is moving more when she strafes the same distance. So long back and forth strafes with Wraith are the best. Someone like Crypto, however, his strafes are better if you just strafe back and forth as fast as possible because his head wiggles back and forth like crazy. It's crazy, his head goes left to right pretty significantly. Pathfinder, on the other hand, you wanna do a lot of crouching because he's a taller legend, so crouching is gonna create more 
like height difference between each crouch as opposed to the other legend so focus on crouch spamming like crazy with Pathfinder. There are plenty different strafe patterns and I've gone into these in the past a lot. I put on another video on screen right now that you can watch however what you need to do is pick your main, go into the firing range, activate this easter egg and play around with these strafing animations to see what looks the most tricksy. Master that movement. 1v1 against your friends out in the open using this strafe pattern, get better with it and learn to implement it whilst you're still shooting and being able to aim effectively. Next, let's add strafe randomness. So we've learned how to strafe, we've learned how to strafe and crouch, we've built up a specific strafe pattern that's good for us and our main character and now we're going to add strafe randomness. This is as simple as just aiming down sights at different times, just when you feel like doing it, you know. What you do when you aim down sights is you go from your hip fire movement speed to that aim down sight movement speed of that specific weapon. Now if it's a pistol it's the same speed so this isn't going to work for pistols but if you're using an SMG, a shotgun, a sniper, an assault rifle, anything like that. In fact the heavier weapons this works better. Try and focus on being hip fire as much as possible in an engagement close range, but then start just zooming in for a couple seconds, getting out of ADS and repeating that. What that does is it makes it very hard for the enemy to track you because you're going to be going at a consistent speed and they're going to be able to track that, but then you aim down sights for a couple seconds and suddenly your speed changes and they're going to miss your shots. And then you come out of ADS and go back to full speed and you can really start to play with people's head by doing this. Next one, this is sort of just a passing tip, try not to jump in fights as much as you can. The kind of distance as you're landing down onto the ground again, your speed and momentum drops and you're sort of floating there in the air for a split second. It kind of feels like that. You're a pretty easy target when you jump in the air. Try not to do it unless you're going into that jump with momentum first. We'll talk more about that later. For example, wall jumps. Next, let's talk about movement in cover. Really, really important. You can consciously make the decision to play in cover perfectly and it's going to make yourself really hard to hit. Strafing makes you harder to hit, but if you're out in the open, 100% of your body is in the open for them to shoot. They don't have to hit you in the head, they just have to hit part of your body. But if you're playing around cover, a smaller percentage of your body is actually in their view, meaning they're going to have a harder time hitting you. So the first tip is keep as much of your body behind cover as often as possible. If you're going to engage in a fight, look at your surroundings, look at the cover you have, and try and keep your body behind cover as much as possible. Peak with only a bit of your body showing, change the angle that you're kind of engaging on that player so that you're always, as often as possible, I can't stress this enough, as much as you can, take fights from behind cover. This brings us to sort of another thing that you can do. When you're using specific weapons that have a slow fire rate, you can actually go entirely behind cover whilst you're waiting for the next shot to be available to shoot, so that you're basically only peeking when you're doing damage or potentially doing damage so that you're not giving them the advantage, right? Mastiff is a great example of this. The Mastiff is a very strong and very popular weapon in this game, so we're going to be calling this Mastiff Peaking. Essentially, you take a shot whilst you're halfway of cover and then you go behind cover fully and then peek again when you're ready to shoot again. You can get this timing down to a perfection but the timing does change depending on what bolt you get but either way if you're spending more time behind cover fully out of their line of sight whilst you're not able to shoot the fights are going to go more in your favor massively. Another thing is to learn door play. I, I don't know what to call it really. Door play is something that is all about playing around doors, playing around cover. There's so much you can do with doors, right? There's sort of a rock, paper, scissors to it, okay? And I'm going to break that down now. So if you're healing behind a door, a player is going to do one of three things. They're going to try and kick the door, they're going to try and thermite the door, or they're just gonna wait or go through another entrance. So what you need to do is learn their behavior. Be prepared for these things. If you're healing, start to heal. If they kick the door, continue to heal until they're about to do the second kick and then quickly stop healing and shoot them. In fact, to get it perfect, sometimes it's best to start shooting whilst they've already started that second kick animation so that as soon as the door is broken, you're going to do damage to them whilst they're stuck in that animation and you're going to get the most benefit of that animation sort of change as much as possible. If they get out a grenade, all you need to do is step away from the door 
and then if they suddenly put that grenade away and try and open the door just push yourself against the door again to keep it shut and if they leave and go to another door or try and get in the building from another way all you do is open the door and then block it from the other side and that will allow you to once again stop them from getting to you whilst you're healing if you're doing it the other way and you're the attacker Basically, you're going to need thermite, so you're going to need to try and play around the door and get an angle on them from a different angle. Don't kick the door, just don't do it. Of course, if you have teammates to back you up, then kicking the door can be fine, but otherwise, if you're solo, it's not a great idea. Okay, now we're going to be talking about situations when you're not behind cover and you need to get behind cover, but you're caught out in the open. What a lot of people do is move their aim or their movement control back and forth like crazy to try and dodge bullets. If you do this in this game, it's going to break your momentum. The momentum in Apex is very fluid if you know how it works. Sharp turns cut into your momentum. In fact, there's a movement technique called cut strafing that basically you use this technique to your advantage and you cut your movement specifically at sudden points to make yourself harder to hit. There's a card on screen right now for that tutorial. However, you don't really want to be doing that if you're trying to escape a situation and you're out in the open. So what you need to do is do a smooth zigzag pattern like this as you're going back and forth and that will mean you're going to keep the maximum movement speed and you're not going to cut into that speed at any point. And if you want to take it next level, then you want to do b-hopping. B-hopping is faster than this zigzag style. B-hopping is not faster than just moving straight in a direction from point A to point B. Just going straight from point A to point B with some slides and jumps is the fastest movement method. But if you want to try and be as hard to hit as possible, b-hopping is very good. I have done tons of b-hop tutorials, both for console and PC. So yeah, maybe there'll be one on the screen if we haven't run out of cards. If we have, link it in the description. So, so far I've taught you how to do strafing, how to play around cover, how to play between cover. Now we're going to be talking about pushing people's angles because, or pushing people's corners. If another player is playing in cover, at some point you are going to need to push that angle and get to them where they're trying to peek that angle and have that cover and have the defensive position. Thankfully, you get a lot of benefit as an aggressor in this game. So what you really need to do is not just run around a corner and instead use a different movement technique to push that corner. The first being a very simple slide push. Sliding around the corner, you will be lower height than they expect. You'll be moving around the corner faster than they expect and you can get the jump on them. Speaking of jumps, what about a wall jump push? A wall jump is done by sliding, jumping, letting go of all movement as soon as you touch the wall jump again and then move your movement in the direction you want to turn. So you can wall jump at a wall and move your momentum and control your movement in the air and push yourself around a corner. Practice this, you're really gonna be able to use it in a lot of situations, especially when you're pushing someone's corner. You also have the wide swing and b-hop push. Essentially, what you want to do is slide and then in the air, control your movement stick and aim stick, or if you're on the mouse, control A and move your mouse in that direction or D and move your mouse in the right direction as you swing wide around the corner and that's going to give you a sudden boost in movement because in Apex you gain momentum when you do these wide arcing turns in the air. You're going to swing around that corner really fast. If you have a weapon like an Eva or something like that, you're going to be able to do a lot of damage to them. Finally, we have the wall climb push. This one is harder to do effectively because you do kind of have to lose some momentum and you're kind of vulnerable when you do it, but it can work well. Essentially, you climb up a wall and as you're about to go around the corner, you drop on them and it can work effectively because they very rarely expect it. But if they peak whilst you're doing this, it can backfire. So just learn that this is a possibility. Now we're going to be talking about another thing that a lot of people kind of miss out on and that is accuracy whilst moving. Now in this game movement is really important but when you move too much some weapons really do struggle to hit the shots. Of course you can ADS at all times but that does limit your movement a little bit. So let's talk about this a little bit. Every weapon has different accuracy stats when aiming down sight when hip strafing, when hip running, and when hip firing in the air. You have to pick your battles when it comes to this. Picking the R99 over the vault is going to be a great choice if you like movement over aim. Movement on the R9 is great. You can hip fire very well on this weapon, sometimes even get some good shots in the air whilst using the R9. It's got a three times better on average 
hip fire spread compared to the vault. The EVA is entirely accurate when in hip fire, the spread isn't changed at all. The Mastiff, however, you definitely want to ADS with this thing. However, no matter what you're doing, no matter how you're moving, it's going to have the same spread as well. The triple take is a really interesting weapon. If you're in the air, you can still get 100% accuracy so long as you're aiming down sights. The charge rifle is 100% accurate no matter what you're doing, although you probably want to ADS to actually see what you're shooting at. Finally, I'm going to talk on some legend specific combat tips, and then we'll move into some decision making tips that I think are useful for everyone to know. So firstly, if you're fighting Gibby, you should aim at his feet if you have a high damage weapon or he has low level armor, otherwise you're going to have to go through that shield and it's not worth it. However, if you have a low damage weapon, going through a shield is technically the best option. Overall, the damage and the amount of shots you have to do is going to be about the same regardless. If you're fighting Wraith, try not to use a Mastiff. A good Wraith can crouch and become very hard to hit, and you'll get more 14s than you ever have done when fighting a Wraith with a Mastiff. If you're fighting against Pathfinder, aim for his legs. It's the biggest area on his body and it counts as body damage as he's still low profile. And lots of Pathfinders like to crouch spam, but it's no problem. Even if they crouch spam up and down, this is gonna be a great counter to that because you're just gonna track the same point. Just consider his legs his center of mass. Right, let's move on to decision making. You should concentrate hard when fighting Octane or Bangalore instead of entirely relying on your muscle memory for aim. The increased movement speed while strafing will mess you up. So just focus on some deep breathing, focus hard on your screen and you're gonna hit those shots. You don't really need to do it for the other legends because they will move at about the same speed. When going for 20 bombs, pay attention to the ship path, then follow it towards the center of the map. This is often the best way to see as many players as possible. Alternatively, on World's Edge, just land fragment or sorting and chill the hair for most of the game until the ring pushes you out. In ranked, try to look at the ring location and find an option that lets you rotate to the next ring safely. Try to remember where people landed and rotate in directions away from them. Try to rotate to the furthest reaches of the next ring if you think that's where the least amount of players will be. Otherwise, you're just fighting your way through hordes of players that are already deep in the ring ready for rotations. There's a certain flow of combat. If a team backs off, don't assume they won't jump back into fights if you engage another squad. Be aware. On the flip side, if you are taking too much heat from a squad, you can back off a bit, get a good position, and then if your original squad gets pushed, you can re-engage with a better chance of winning your fights. You don't always have to engage or take a battle if someone's trying to shoot you. You can use your movement and positioning skills to get away and re-engage when the time is more suitable. Fights in Apex should be over fast. If you can't secure kills or things are dragging out, you need to rotate or leave that area to find somewhere you can safely set up. If you're not in a safe spot from third parties, like at the edge of a ring, for example, then you need to stop fighting as soon as possible or finish the fight fast, then rotate quick to a safe spot. So that's it. I hope these tips were useful. Hopefully you can watch this video and kind of know what processes you need to go through to be go from noob to pro level really. So thank you so much for watching. There's so many more things we can go into about positioning and all that, and maybe I will in a future video. Let me know your feedback and I'll see you all in the comments. Cheerio.